Today, we're gonna to make this universal clamp rack out of a single sheet of five by five Baltic birch. It can change and grow as your collection grows very easily. There's free plans linked down in the pinned comment. Recently, I was working with a local school to create a maker space for the students. We donated about 50 sheets of Baltic birch plywood and about 20 hours of CNC time when we made this crazy French cleat wall across the entire space. I mean, this entire room was all French cleats and it made me fall in love with French cleat systems and it started getting me thinking about what we could do here in the shop. So we're gonna be doing a lot of French cleat projects coming up. The first one I wanted to do was a truly universal clamp rack. Now there are a lot of quote unquote universal clamp racks videos on YouTube, but none of them are really universal. As you become a woodworker, you think you have your needs figured out. In fact, it was the first project I ever made. You can see the disaster it's become as my business has grown. I wanted to create a system that was not only inexpensive to make, easy to use, but was truly, truly universal. So I came up with a system that not only is truly universal, I mean, look at this, you can actually move these pieces anytime you want. So as your needs grow, it is very, it takes seconds to change and adjust into a way that holds all the clamps you now have, but it can be made out of a single sheet of plywood with enough material to suit anybody's clamp needs. It's incredibly strong. Uh, when I made a prototype, I hung from it and I was able to, you know, and I weigh like what, 140? <laughs> you serious? And it, it just, it's a beautiful system that really, really works well. There'll be free plans on my website that will show you how to lay out and create a bunch of pieces from a single sheet of plywood. And I'm gonna walk you through how to make it right now. So let's head over to the table saw. All right, we've got our full sheet of plywood. We're gonna start working on our triangles first, which we're gonna do by ripping uh, five strips at seven and a half. That'll give us 10 triangles per strip, giving us 25 pairs to hang clamps on. We wanna get this part done first and glued up so that way those can dry for about an hour while we get our French cleat stuff done. Theoretically, you could easily get this done in half a day, maybe just a couple hours with very limited tools. You really could do this with a skill saw, a brad nailer, and some glue pretty easily. So let's get started by ripping these down and then I'm gonna show you how we turn them into triangles on the Cat's Moses multi -set. All right, so now we're gonna take these rectangles and turn them into triangles. I've done the math for you in the plans, but it is very simple to do. You could do this with a track saw, you could do this with a skill saw, uh, but if you have seen my video on the Cat's Moses multi-sled, this is where it really, really shines. Now, these don't even have to be the same size when you're done. They work independent of each other and they can be adjusted this way. The only edge that matters is this top edge. So you could really do this as haphazardly as you want, but I'm gonna do them because I like them to be the same size. Uh, and we're gonna set our fence to 45 degrees. And then to get them to be the same size as in the plans, we are going to measure to our cutting edge. So if you were using a miter gauge, let's say, you would slide your miter gauge forward until it was flat and you would measure to the leading edge of your blade. That measurement for me is gonna be about nine and a quarter. And then what I'm gonna do is separate the first piece. It helps if you put a little piece to catch it that is roughly the same thickness as your sled. We're gonna cut the first piece, grab the off cut, flip it over, and then cut that one so they're the exact same size. Once we do that, we're gonna trim this edge off just to make it nice and square and not have a pokey bit, but you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. So let's separate these and then I'll show you the next step. All right, now here's where a little planning comes into play and your boy, Jonathan Craps Mucus has put plans together to help you with a cut list. The choices here are now, do you go with singles like this that are super adjustable or do you make some that are actually stuck together? We're gonna do both. Now, you know, there's a million different sizes of clamps, the widest being parallel clamps at about an inch and a half, a little bit less, and then pipe clamps, and then you got your F-style clamps. So what we're gonna do is cut a strip of inch and a half, three strips of one inch. Each one of those will make seven pairs of triangles. You'll have a scrap left over that could probably make an eighth pair. And then we're gonna make 
eight singles that are just like this one here. And those will be super adjustable for weird clamps, like if you wanna take your squeeze clamps and just clip them to this guy. Or if you have those wooden parallel clamps, you can make something that is you know, really, really far spaced apart or whatever, or just, you know, put them on there like this, but it'll give us a ton of flexibility. If you're using a full sheet of Baltic birch, that should give you 17 inches left. And we're just gonna cut that all into cleats. You know, I recommend one and three quarter inch minimum to two inches for your cleats. One thing that is very helpful when you do your cleats is to use something to press down on it from above, like attach it to your fence. Because what happens when you're cutting a 45, especially on a rip cut, is as a tendency to kind of lift up and you get a little bit of a wavy cleat. Not that that's gonna matter really in the end, but if you're a perfectionist like I am, put something to push it down and that'll give you really even looking cleats. All right, now it's time to start putting these together. And the way they are going to work is this is gonna get sandwiched in between the ones where we're making pairs. Obviously, we're gonna have the singles. And then one French cleat is gonna go on the back, just like that. So the best way when you have a bunch of repeatable things like this to put together is make jigs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this box that Sean left when he moved out of here and just make jigs to sort of make this easier on myself. So I'm gonna start with one for putting the first piece on and then we'll add to this. I mean, jigs can be something as simple as just a straight edge just to help you line them up. We're gonna use glue and nails. I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna use pin nailer or a finish nailer. I do have some one inch nails for this thing, so I might use this because these nails tend to help tighten up a, a glue seam, but we'll decide as we go. All right, we've got everything sanded and put together. That jig was absolutely essential, so easy to make. You don't need to use a box, obviously. You could stick those to your workbench if you want. But the reason they're so important is it doesn't even matter what shape your triangles are. It's that these two pieces are level and even to each other and the cleat is square to the whole piece. And the reason that's important is when you stick it on the wall, you don't want it to sit wonky or hang down. You know, sometimes when you see people do French cleats, they'll attach it to a sheet of plywood. I don't think there's any need for that. I think the drywall anchors are gonna be just fine. But one thing that is important is you install your first cleat nice and level. You could use a level, there's a tool for that. And then your next cleat goes the this distance, right to the bottom of your triangles. And what that's gonna do is support your triangle when it's up on the wall. If you wanna put your cleats farther apart than that, or you're just gonna use one cleat because you don't have a lot of clamps, you're gonna wanna put a spacer block that is just an off cut from your cleats at the bottom and that's what's gonna support it against the wall and keep this nice and level. One thing I did wanna show you is I did all of these without ever having a nail bust through. There's a reason for that. I'm gonna show you a quick little trick before we start installing these on the wall. So when you're shooting nails, now you can see this is what I'm talking about. We didn't have any blowout on any of these that we made. I had zero problems. And the reason for that is when you look at a rack of nails, this is how it comes out of the gun. So when they come out of the gun, this is the profile they have. Now all nails have because of the way that they're cut, they have a little triangle at the bottom, a little wedge shape, which means if there's a knot in the wood or an imperfection, it's gonna go bend this way or this way. So if you shoot your gun like this, your nail has a tendency to go this way or that way, which means it can come out and you can get blowout. So if you turn your gun like this, if your nail has a problem, it's just gonna stay in the piece of wood. So let me show you. All right, so I'm gonna go pretty close to the edge, sort of how I would be nailing these, and this is what happens. Boom, you get a little blowout. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go really close to the edge, just like I did there, but I'm gonna turn my gun the other way. 
we have no blowout. So you can see they're pretty much in the same place there, but there's much less risk of blowout. So it's a great little tip. That's how I got through these whole things without a single nail going wonky on me. Okay, I think it's official. I may have way too many clamps. Currently, there are 175 clamps on the wall. Every single clamp I own is up here out of a single sheet of plywood. That's incredible. Like I said, check out the free plans. I got the cut list for you. It'd be super easy to make this. If you'd asked me yesterday what I'd do differently, it would be to add anchors on the end because for some reason I did not do that and I did not drill holes. It did, however, get me to find a new kind of anchor that I really like. They hold up to 100 pounds and you could drill through the wood. So I highly recommend these. I like them. They work really, really well. And I went through and drilled holes on the end and added these anchors. And as you can see, 175 clamps, that's so much weight. And this is up here, no problem. It holds all my clamp accessories. The great thing about French cleats, it's customizable, movable, as your clamp needs change, as your clamp collection grows, you can change it all around and move stuff. And the coolest thing is, if you know you're gonna need a bunch of one clamp, you can just take it off the wall and take it to your workstation and then bring it back and put it right back. Super easy. So this came out amazing. I'm really happy with it. It's now been up for a couple days and hasn't come crashing down for all the uh, drywall anchor haters out there, if there are any, I don't know. I highly suggest you check out the free plans and build this thing because it is great and I'm really, really happy with it. Guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to the Cats Moses store, pick up a dovetail jig, a stop block, or an apron. Stay safe at the shop. Have a wonderful day.